pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Book Two. Welcome back to my channel. This is Friday Reads for, uh, I don't know the date, September 29th, maybe. I'll edit that out if I'm not correct. Uh, I've got a few things to say, but uh, I'd like to be brief. I've just done two review videos, and I thought about running back to my apartment and changing my shirt for each video, but uh, uh, no. <laughs> I'm getting a little tired of sitting here on this little uncomfortable, very low bench. But... Yeah, Friday Reads. I've had an interesting week of reading. I'm not going to talk about everything because I'd like to keep it short. But I did start just yesterday a novel from Minnesota. I'm doing this for a buddy read on Litzy. It is called Wintering by Peter Gay. I didn't actually check how he pronounces it. Gay? I know I'm gay. Is Peter Gay? I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, Peter. I meant to do that. So this is a Minnesota novel. I just start, I've read like 15 pages maybe. Starting out really good. I'm enjoying the writing. It's about a old man that seems like he has Alzheimer's or something like that who walks off in the winter and so far they don't think they'll ever find him again. And it's dialogue between his son and his longtime girlfriend who seems to be the narrator so far anyway quite enjoying it. Beautiful. It's got a kind of a sandpapery feeling and it's oversized. Uh, the new edition, this was a 2016 novel and it's already been reprinted in hardcover with a black and white photo on the cover which I thought was boring so I went to great lengths and roped a lovely reading friend from the States to get me this original hardcover. I also started, this is going to be a crazy book, for one of my reading challenges I have to read a food memoir and I got wind of this on Twitter six months or so ago and I just started it this week. Look at this. Long Throat Memoir, Soups, Sex and Nigerian Taste Buds. Oh my god, the title alone, right? And look at her. I love her, just from her photo. And I've only read ten pages and she's got a sassy, uh, fun voice. And she has, she wrote or is still writing a cooking column or Nigerian food column in Nigeria. Oh, sorry, her name is Yemisi Aribisala. I think this is going to be really fun. It's got, it's not a cookbook at all. But I guess there's a couple recipes maybe. Lots of uh, photos, but mostly essays about the connection between food and sex in Nigerian culture. I'm here for that. I'm not going to talk about all of my bales. I had a big bale day. I'll talk about everything in my wrap-up, but uh, this is one. Distant Light by Antonio Moresco. I have to read a book for D, and the one that I chose I bailed on that day. And then I saw this and thought, oh, I can try it. It's short, and it's Italian, and I haven't read much. I've never read an Italian novel, and I bailed. <laughs> Page seven or something. So there's this man. He's living alone in a village an abandoned village and I know that there's a, there's a light shining across the valley and he's wondering who's over there and I know from the just reading a couple sentences of the blurb that it's a boy that he eventually finds but I don't do well with the Robinson Crusoe man in isolation without any social contact human contact I get bored very quickly there's a really great Canadian novel, Sweetland by Michael Crummy, that ends that way, and so I didn't enjoy it by the end because it was this Robinson Crusoe thing where he was alone on an abandoned island and that just... I think it scares me, but and but also bores me, like there's something about me that I just... imagining myself in isolation like that freaks me out, but I, I don't enjoy books that do that. But I knew there was going to be a boy getting into the story eventually, but I still had to bail because the dialogue was so lame. So I don't know how long he's been alone in this town, but he's already getting a bit loopy. So he's talking to the trees, and he's saying things like, I think this was the sentence that made me bail. Sometimes I stop in front of one of these trees and look at it. Now here's the dialogue. Mon here's the monologue. But how do you live like that? I ask it. 
For humans, it's not possible. Either they're alive or they're dead. Or so it seems, at least. Dot, dot, dot. It gives no answer. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Fail. Direct speech in fiction has to be interesting. It has to be well written. It has to have some vim and vigor. Still reading this, I'll be reading this for weeks. Uh, Chintu, the uh, Ugandan, Ugandan saga, Jennifer Nansubuga Makumbi. Really enjoying it. And just have to tell you, I'm not going to read from it, but one of Chintu, he's the clan chief. One of his sons is getting married, and so there's kind of like a stag party. All the clansmen get around with the young, studly son, Bale, and they start regaling him or f really freaking him out with stories about the tradition that the bride's aunt hides under the bed on the wedding night to make sure that her niece's new husband can perform and they just tell him story after story and I don't know how much of it's true but it's certainly a humorous uh, part of the story and they're saying one time I heard this one time where the the young man couldn't perform so the aunt came up from out under the bed and lent a hand <laughs> and the son is getting wide-eyed are you oh my god he's just getting freaked out I love that she is playing with gender and sexuality, not just playing, but sh she's writing about gender and sexuality in a really interesting way. There's gay stuff and lots of, you know, she's a, a, a woman writer, of course, and there's lots about male sexuality and female sexuality. It's uh, quite a wild ride. I mentioned last week that I had started this. I'm not too far into it, but I'm really loving this. Ali Smith's How to Be Both. I just love her writing. Now, this is the second book I've read by her. I loved August. I, I will be furious if it, August, August, autumn. I will be furious if autumn doesn't win the Booker. I, I didn't really like Lincoln on the Bardo, but it's the only other one I think that is deserving. But uh, autumn should win. Anyway, back to how to be both. Just a few pages into it, it's so rich. I love the way she writes about popular culture in a way that defamiliarizes it so that it, so sometimes I don't even recognize what she's writing about. So she, there's a few pages about that 1950s or 1960 pop song, Tell Laura I Love Her. It's just wonderful. But in the story, the mother of the, I forget exactly how old, the precocious little girl named George is, I want to say 12 or 13, but her mother dies quite suddenly. And so there's a lot about mourning and grief and death and grammar, switching from present tense to past tense in a way that really kind of tugs on your heart. I just want to share this one passage where uh, George, the girl, George is such a man's name that I got to about page five before I realized the pronoun was she with George. But here's a very short passage that uh, I thought was really powerful. George talking to her uh, school guidance counselor or something, Mrs. Rock. How are you feeling, Mrs. Rock said. I'm okay, George said. I think it's because I don't think I am. You're okay because you don't think you're okay, Mrs. Rock said. Feeling. George said. I think I'm okay because I don't think I'm feeling. You don't think you're feeling, Mrs. Rock said. Well, if I am, it's like it's at a distance, George said. If you're feeling, it's at a distance, Mrs. Rock said. Like always having the sound of someone drilling a hole in a wall. Not your wall, but a wall like very close to you, George said. Like, say you wake up one morning to the noise of someone along the road having work done on his or her house, and you don't just hear the drilling happening, you feel it in your own house, though it's actually happening several houses away. Love that, and that's all I've got for today's Friday Reads. I hope you're having a fabulous reading day. Please tell me about it in the comments below, or put your own video up. Thanks for watching mine. Have a great weekend.